afternoon. Uh, I'm Al Keppel, your friendly neighborhood uh, Kretz Forester, and I'm out here with Rick Peters. Rick is the landowner out here. He's also uh, a dairy farmer, and in the wintertime he does some logging. Uh, Rick bought this property from his grandfather, so it's been in the in Rick's family for many gener or well third generation now, and uh, uh, this was always uh, kind of their pride and joy out here. As these trees are reaching maturity, Rick is out here trying to manage them. And this one got a little carried away in, in growing and got uh, quite a bit bigger than what we typically like to see. So part of our uh, discussion today is going to be one from an economic point of view. Letting this tree get this large was the wrong thing to do from an economic point of view. Troy, if you want to walk over and take a, get a shot of the seam on this tree, and you can already see uh, it, external indications where the tree is starting to go bad on the inside. And the other thing is, Troy, if you pan up to that, uh, the crown up there, you can see where it's crotched up there. And if the tree falls to, the, to be to Troy's right, and it hits that huge branch going out to the right, it'll split the tree down the whole length of the tree and destroy 80% uh, of the value of this tree. Part of this also plays into landowner goals. If part of uh, your goal is to grow huge trees, if that was Rick's goal, he certainly succeeded because this is a large diameter, still relatively healthy tree, but it is does have decay on the inside, which we'll see when it's cut down, or otherwise I'll it'll look like I'm just telling stories out of school. But my guess is with the hole there, the uh, chipmunk hole right here that there is internal decay in this tree. A couple other things with this tree that Rick had to make some decisions on when he was deciding on which way the tree is going to go down. Like I said if it goes down behind me there's a very good chance of this splitting this tree right down to the bottom. The other thing on the back side of this tree the crown of a small diameter maple broke off and is hanging in there. And that's called a widow maker which if it's not taken care of before Rick starts working on this tree, it could hurt Rick or actually kill him. The other thing we have to take into consideration, this tree over here has to be removed prior to Rick cutting that big one. And in order to get this one out, Rick has to cut another oak down there so this one has a spot to drop. So Rick has to cut two relatively nice oaks in order just to get this tree down. So, between uh, Rick, another forester named Brian, and myself, I have probably spent a half hour discussing options, plus Rick has spent quite a bit of time out here looking at this, trying to figure out what's the safest and uh, best way to handle the situation. So, uh, starting out, we'll be taking care of the maple hazard tree, and then Rick will work on these other two before he starts working on this. going to work on this tree as I mentioned earlier. Uh, two good sized oak trees need to come down in order for Rick to drop the large diameter one. Uh, 
the reason we're one of the reasons we're picking on this tree also if you pan to your left right, you can see that stump from that large oak there as this one came down it took out part of the crown of this tree so this is a choice for why we're taking this one down why we chose it. Even with that uh, tree, take a look at the crotch of that. You can see where it's split, and lit Rick lost value with that tr with that oak tree coming down. It split the top, and he probably lost about four or five feet of saw material. is doing now is setting wedges so that it is, it's a complete cut so that the tree doesn't settle and crush the skin and break the fiber in the skin. away so when you walk away because the tree is starting to fall you don't trip. Because of the root flare, Rick wasn't able to make the hinge exactly the way he wanted to. He, he left a lot of fiber here, and we were aiming the tree for that direction, and it fell this way. With that much weight, it's extremely difficult with these huge trees, and that one's twice as big, if not three times as big. It's that much more difficult to direct these trees the way you want yeah, to. You could have cut the hinge here. It went where it wanted to. Yeah, where Mother and, Nature intended. And in doing so, it did crack the bottom part of this log, which did decrease the value to some degree. So uh, it's a beautiful oak tree, and uh, for the most part, it did very little damage in coming down. So in that regard, it was it was a success. Okay, with proper hand felling methods, it's very important. Rick is using what's called an open face notch. And the bottom cut and the angle cut coming down from the top is where he created the edge of his hinge. There won't be stress on this fiber till this part of the hinge to the notch touches this part. And when that happens, the tree is pretty much already on the ground. So the way Rick is doing it is to eliminate busting the stump, busting the base of that tree. Uh, here's the hinge. He bored in. He cut this way because the tree was thicker than his bar. He also had a bore in this way and cut back. The tree does not start falling until this last little bit of wood is cut. That gives Rick a long time to get out of the danger zone and get away from any falling debris. Say the tree were to split, anything negative that could go wrong gives Rick quite a bit of time to get away and into the safety zone. Uh, right now as Rick is taking a look at uh, marking this last tree he cut up, so he's going to well, mark that out. That stump that's all rotten. What's that? That stump that's all rotten. Classic case of too big in the seam. Most foresters, when we measure trees as going out to do an inventory or calculating the board foot volumes out in the woods, we measure trees at what's called DBH, diameter breast height. That's four and a half feet off the ground. So today we're going to measure this tree and see how much, how big in diameter it is at DBH. And then we're going to measure the diameter where Rick is going to cut. So Liz, I'll give you the, the dumb end of the tape. Just hold it here. And if you read, it'll tell you how many inches. Troy, can you zoom in on the tape? 
And this tree is 41 inches in diameter, four and a half feet off the ground. So uh, 36 would be three feet, so it's well over four, or well over three feet in diameter this high up. And what we'll do, Liz, why don't you hold this down here? Hold the tape right about there. And where Rick is going to cut the tree off, it's uh, not quite 58 inches in diameter, so 48 would be 4 feet. So it's uh, well on its way to almost uh, 5 feet in diameter. Just uh, 60 inches would be 5 feet. So it's a pretty good sized tree. Uh, Rick, if you want to come over and explain how, what kind of notch you're going to make and uh, what direction you intend on falling it. We talked a little earlier about looking at the crown of the tree with the heavy limbs. If we take it off, to, it would be to Troy's left. Take it down that direction, good chance you could split this tree and ruin the lumber value in it, or the veneer value. It does have a full, full length seam on it, so chances of there being a, being a veneer log in here are pretty slim. But you could uh, ruin saw log value if it splits. So with that, Rick, I'll let you explain what your plan of attack is for taking this tree down. Well, the tree has a very heavy lean to the south, which is down this hill. So there's really not much we can do about it. It's too big to wedge uphill. There's no way it'll work. So we're going to cut an open face notch on the south side where we've made the opening, cutting the other two trees off for it. The maple tree there is on his own if it gets lucky and survives it'll live to be a big tree someday we hope if it doesn't well that's the that's the coin we're flipping here um, we will bore from both sides in with a 24 inch bar which probably will not reach the middle so i will then have to bore in the center of the tree also on the south side to take the center of the tree out otherwise it will not be completely cut off so by the time we get the notch cut do the bore in and cut from both sides and end up back here the tree should go down the hill and with a huge crash. And we'll hope it doesn't split, but I'm afraid it might because of the seam it has. There's nothing we can do about it.
Hello folks, Al Keppel out of Kretz Lumber. I'm out on Rick Peters' property. We're in southwestern Shano County. And uh, Rick cut down a tree that was 38 inches DBH and just shy of five feet uh, across on the stump. Uh, some of the challenges in growing these large diameter trees, they're pretty to look at, but when it comes to the economic aspect of growing trees, it, it becomes a real negative. As this tree aged, the uh, seams started creeping in where the wood was splitting. And you can see multiple seams on this tree that was working in. The reason these seams are so negative is they can't be used for veneer. When you have the seams, they can't be used for veneer. This tree also had two main uh, large branches up in the crown. And as this tree fell, it twisted just enough that that one branch hit the ground first. And it was almost like a scissor, scissors effect and brought those two tops together with a tremendous amount of force which split this tree basically into three different pieces. Looking at this piece furthest to my left where that dark wood is, that tree had, had the seam had split that uh, wood apart for many many years and you can see that dark colored. So with that much of the tree being open like that, an open seam, it really reduced the strength of this tree so that once it did hit there was less good sound wood holding it together and it popped apart. Uh, Rick's upper logs on this tree have been pretty much destroyed. We'll be able to salvage uh, saw timber out of this bottom part, maybe out of that part, but the rest of this is going to end up in Rick's pulpwood pile and pulp value is just a fraction of what uh, saw timber value is. So. Uh, Rick probably grew, this tree probably stood for 30 to 50 years longer than it should have. And uh, it was a very massive, impressive looking tree. But uh, so Rick had an extra 30 to 50 years worth of growth on this tree and uh, ends up netting considerably less dollars than had it been harvested earlier by his grandfather.